Clark, so we'll begin. I hope you had a good day yesterday. It was a beautiful day. Uh, some of you may have had a front seat row at, for a historic event. Um, let me go straight into some um, announcements. The draft report of the first meeting of the Economic Commission was posted on the Assembly website under Economic Commission working papers for your advanced consideration. And we re did receive some comments from some delegates. Thank you very much. No, no, it's fine, fine. Uh, for those who have not looked at them, uh, please begin your review before we meet on Monday afternoon and provide your comments to the Secretariat by email or hand copy to any of the Secretariat staff present here today. So what we'll do, I'll ask somebody from the Secretariat to write the email on a piece of paper that we can put here during the afternoon. People can see the email address and use it to send their comments. We have another busy agenda today, particularly because we have not yet covered item 33 from the last time. The same rules apply for your interventions as Wednesday. We'll have 90 seconds to present the working papers. You should focus on stating the main theme of the paper or the issue it addresses and what the conclusion, recommendation, or action items are. Again, I will have to be strict with time management. If you exceed your time allotment, I will have to stop your intervention. And uh, as uh, Friday or uh, Wednesday, rather, I count on your collaboration in this respect. And lastly, for the benefit of the interpreters, please, please do not speak too fast. So we're, uh, we will start with item 33, although I, uh, I think Japan wants to take the floor. Go ahead, Japan. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson. Uh, Japan would like to ask uh, permission or exemption uh, from Economic Commission to give me a 60 seconds opportunity to introduce uh, the working paper 468. Thank you. So 468 was the uh, paper on unmanned aircraft. Um, go ahead, Japan. You have uh, 60 seconds. Okay. Thank you. I will check my uh, rock. So, uh, Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. So the title, Economic Regulatory Consideration for Unmanned Aircraft, uh, Working Paper uh, 468. Uh, and the uh, uh, delivery service by drone have been realistic, becoming realistic. Uh, and that, however, technical and the security and the environmental and the legal aspect has already been discussed uh, in uh, IKO uh, several forums. But uh, economic consideration uh, for unmanned aircraft have not been on the table yet. So uh, this paper uh, introduced some example which uh, economic uh, uh, commission uh, will en uh, enjoy uh, discuss uh, in the future, such as uh, relationship with Article 7 of Chicago Convention. This is a famous uh, article for uh, cabotage. Uh, so uh, some foreign countries operate uh, drone uh, <clears throat> they were service in other countries uh, in the, their domestic market. So uh, that operation can be considered uh, uh, as a you know, uh, cabotage. So, and the other one is Article 8 of the Chicago Convention. So um, uh, it also, uh, the relationship with the International Air Service Transit Agreement. So um, <clears throat> if uh, I would like, Japan would like to recommend that uh, uh, ATRP explore the issue uh, raised in this working paper. Uh, to possibly uh, complement the work being done on unmanned aircraft in other IKO panel. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, Japan, for this uh, this mention. Um, does anybody else want to uh, say a quick word on this uh, this issue? Canada. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Canada would support that proposal. Okay. Thank you. The chair will take uh, uh, take note of this uh, this point. United States. Is this about this paper or something else? 
Yes, uh, the United States does not support the suggestion, thinking it's far too premature. Also, it's rather irregular to discuss the merits uh, when it was an information paper that was not going to be presented. Austria. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we would also um, support um, Japan and would see um, an added value to also to deal with those questions in the ATRP. Thanks. Okay. So I take uh, I take note of those uh, those comments. Let's move on now to item 33, uh, which is left over from the last uh, meeting. Uh, item 33 is economics of airports and air navigation services policy. There are four working papers under this theme, working paper 17 and working paper 18 by the ICAO Council, 183 by Ukraine, and 246 by the United Arab Emirates. And there are also three information papers, uh, 350 by the Dominican Republic, 380 by India, 549 by Indonesia. These uh, information papers will be noted in the report I would now ask the Secretariat to please pre present working paper 17 and 18. Thanks. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this working paper number 17 addressed the challenge of financing aviation infrastructure development and modernization based on the outcome of the third and fourth ICAO World Aviation Forum. This is so-called IWAF. Paragraph two presented a suggested comprehensive, holistic, and transformative approach for states to address aviation quality, aviation infrastructure challenges, which should be underpinned by coherent policies and good governance at all levels. Paragraph three summarized the existing ICAO policies, guidance, and tools to support state in financing aviation infrastructure. Paragraph four provided information on ICAO's plan for future work related to financing aviation infrastructure, which focuses on the provision of guidance and assistance for states in taking the comprehensive, holistic, and transformative approach to address the infrastructure gap. Uh, action for the assembly is presented in the assembly, uh, the, the working paper, the executive summary box. Thank you very much. So can I continue the working paper 18? Uh, working paper 18 is much more usual paper to summarize the area of the work accomplished by the ICAO regarding the economic aspect of airports and air navigation services. Our work focused on the development of guidance to address issues related to economically non-viable airport, updating and refining existing policy and guidance, providing new tools to support investment decisions on financing aviation infrastructure and modernization of the tariffs for airports and air navigation services. In addition, ongoing work is being conducted on examining further guidance on cost recovery for the provision of airport and air navigation services. Summary of the work accomplished with respect to each of this area is presented in paragraph two. Paragraph three presented the future work plan in the field of uh, this area, focusing on the continued update and development of relevant policies, guidance, and tools, and raising awareness on the implementation by states and service providers. Action for the assembly is presented in the executive summary box. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I would now ask uh, Ukraine to please briefly present your uh, working paper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm pleased to present working paper 183 prepared by Ukraine in cooperation with the European and North Atlantic ICAO Regional Office. Now, an increasing number of states are facing the issue of sufficient and sustainable funding of the activities related to the main oversight responsibilities in the sphere of civil aviation. Limited financial resources dedicated to these activities often result into a lower effective implementation of the ICAO SARPs, which is directly related to safety. Proper functioning of the Civil Aviation Authority starts with their sustainable financing. In this paper, Ukraine also shares its own example of how the State Aviation Administration of Ukraine, according to the uh, ICAO recommendations and guidance, is being financed through the passenger and cargo charges, and how this allows the Ukra Ukrainian CAA to be financially independent 
independent from the main government treasury. This paper also pays attention to the sustainable financing of the RCOOs and the positive impact it gives. Coming to the conclusion of this working paper presentation, we invite the Assembly to a. Reconfirm the main principles related to the proper financing of CAAs in compliance with the existing ICAO policy, including the example of Ukrainian CAA as provided in this paper. Note that there is a direct correlation between the level of CAA financing and the levels of air transport development, as well as the effective implementation of safety critical elements. Consider the fact that lower level of CAAs financing when compared with the industry level of financing over CAAs are responsible for oversight is a ground for safety and security concerns. Call upon all member states to take all necessary steps to provide adequate and sustainable sources for CAA's financing to enhance oversight functions on aviation safety and security and the development of civil aviation. Request the Council to conduct on the No Country Left Behind initiative dedicated workshops, seminars for member states on regional levels with the, pur with the purpose to ensure widespread awareness and knowledge of ICAO policies, guidance and other material related to the funding of oversight functions, share best practices among states and assist them on the ways to go forward according to ICAO policies in this sphere. As a result of such seminars, workshops on overall picture for each ICAO region will be created and then uh, each region could develop an action plan aimed at helping each state individually and or through RCOs at regional level to take uh, to tackle issues of the lack of financing. We invite everyone to support this initiative as well as the proposed action, uh, actions for the Assembly and believe that implementation of them will play a huge role in sustainable development of civil aviation uh, worldwide and allow to meet the ICAO strategic objectives. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Ukraine. I would now ask the United Arab Emirates to pr uh, please briefly present your working paper. Thank you. Uh, the UAE is uh, presenting this uh, working paper, which deals with an increase in investment uh, in aviation in United Arab Emirates. Our United uh, Arab Emirates have increased uh, our investment in aviation infrastructure commitment. We will present information on the investment in this sector. In order to attract invest investors to investment in infrastructure, the idea is to protect the network in a sustainable fashion. This is a sector that contributes to implementing the SDGs. In 2019, uh, we initiated a Global Investment in Aviation Summit held in January of 2019, and it will be held uh, annually for the next four years. The one, uh, the edition held in 2019, made it possible to come up with uh, some positive results in aviation. And investment, investors have said that they want to increase their investments. On this foundation, UAE will send in invitations to all of the countries that would like to participate in the future. UA, the UAE calls upon the Assembly to adopt a resolution that directs ICAO uh, in alignment with ICAO's strategic objectives to and under the SDGs to establish a global initiative that would support the UN SDGs. Right to Aviation for Everyone and Everywhere would be the name. Invite states to collaborate and participate in the UAE initiative of the Global Investment in Aviation Summit in its upcoming sessions. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, UAE. We will now uh, take interventions from the floor on uh, any of these four working papers. I remind you to be brief uh, and to the point and also to state which paper you're commenting on. So uh, we will now take uh, comments. Republic of Moldova.
Okay, uh, I've got Afghanistan then. Thank you. Actually, it's ACI, Airports Council International. Um, this is for working paper 18. Uh, ACI would like to commend ICAO as well as all states' representatives engaged in ICAO's airport economics panel for the work achieved. ACI would like to highlight the update of ICAO's guidance material on airport, network, on airport economics as it relates to airport networks. The 2019 ACI inventory of airport networks reveals that 151 out of 193 ICAO member states or 78% have some sort of airport network arrangement. Airport networks are responsible for managing and operating a significant number of small airports. More than half of all small airports in the world are operated by airport networks. Airports belonging to airport networks benefit from an econ economies of scope and scale that generate efficiency in terms of cost and charges and are critical in the sustainability of the air transport system overall in view of their contribution to safety, security, economic development, and connectivity. Therefore, ACI applauds the recognition of the value of the network model and its economic characteristics as regards to cost and charges in the ICAO Airport Ex Economics Manual, DOC 9562. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, ACI. Uh, Poland. Uh, this is uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, um, this intervention is regarding paper 183 by Ukraine. We would like to support this paper. We believe that the lack of financial resources cannot be an obstacle to maintain the right level of safety oversight activity. If the state is not... My apologies. My apologies. Which country is speaking? Is it Poland or another it's country? It's Poland. Poland. Sorry. My apologies. Go ahead. Okay. We would like to support paper 183 by Ukraine. Um, we believe that if the state is not able to provide sufficient level of CAA financing, then the user pays principles should be applied. The user pays principle can have a form of operator's fee or a passenger fee that shouldn't be an aviation tax, but an earmarked fee that goes directly to CAA. Thank you. Thank you, Poland. I have uh, North Macedonia. We, we can't hear you. Please press your button. Thank you. Should be a red light uh, here. Can you use a microphone next to uh, the other one, maybe? Okay, I'll ask. Uh, I have to ask you to move to the, under the seat. In the meantime, uh, can we have intervention from Azerbaijan? I think you were next. Then I'll go back to North uh, Macedonia. Please go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Azerbaijan supports uh, working paper 183 presented by Ukraine. The issues brought up in this document touch upon problems that uh, face all CAAs. ICAO, in our opinion, as an international body which ensures sustainable development of uh, international air transport, must take corresponding measures in order to develop detailed guidance on the issues of financing civil aviation. Thank you for your attention. North Macedonia, please go ahead now. Sorry, you have to press the button. Can you take one of the uh, standalone microphones, maybe? Here we go. Okay. Uh, Republic of North Macedonia would like to support working paper 183 on financial mechanisms for the civil aviation authorities. 
We are facing, as many other countries, the issue of sufficient and sustainable funding of the Aeronautical Authority that has direct impact on the level of the capability to conduct oversight responsibilities. Limited financial resources de dedicated to these activities often result in, with inability to hire and retain qualified staff to conduct the oversight and regulatory responsibilities. We are aware of and also have experienced that there is a direct correlation between the level of the CA funding, stability and the independency of the financial resources with the level of the effective implementation, especially in the org area. Having in mind the aforesaid, North Macedonia would like to draw the attention of the member states and urge them to take action and provide adequate and sustainable financing, me uh, financing mechanisms in order to enhance the oversight functions of the av aviation authorities on the safety and security of the civil aviation sector. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mar North Macedonia. Um, I will repeat a comment I made uh, during our last meeting. If you support a paper, all you need to say is you support the paper. You do not need to justify your support, okay? We take it uh, as granted. If you feel that you need to add a bit more to the, what the paper is about, fine. But if uh, you just want to indicate support, just say so, okay? We have a lot of uh, papers to go through today and uh, lots of countries who want to speak. So we'll try to be as brief as possible and uh, manage our time. Thank you very much for your understanding. Next is uh, Pakistan. Okay, uh, then I've got Israel, no, Austria. Thank you. Um, I'd like to make an intervention on working paper 18. We welcome ICAO's report on the, the economic aspects of airports and air navigation services, and we support, ICAO, support ICAO's work on the respective guidance material. On guidance on cost recovery for the provisions of airports and air navigation services with regard to unmanned aircraft systems, as outlined in uh, number uh, 2.10 of the paper, we would highlight that a possible cost recovery mechanism for providing air navigation services to the unmanned aircraft system should be left open for member states how to address this matter nationally, and that a possible mechanism shall not only be on a fair and equitable basis, but should also be transparent. Thank you. Thank you, Austria. Republic of Moldova. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Republic of Moldova would like to support the uh, work paper presented by Ukraine. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Canada. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Canada supports working paper 17 and 18 as presented. Thank you. Check you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we would like to also to support the working paper 183 presented by Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you. Benay? Thank you, Chair. Bena supports uh, Working Paper 183 from Ukraine. Thank you. Georgia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Georgia would like to support Working Paper presented by Ukraine 183. Thank, Thank you. you. There's lots of support. I sense a lot of support for Working Paper 183. Um, so unless you don't support, you can uh, ask for uh, the microphone. If you just want to support, I don't think there's, uh, that's needed at this point. So I'll take uh, comments to those who would not support 183 uh, or comments on the other working papers now. So Slovenia. Slovenia, go ahead. Are you in the room? Slovenia is not in the room, it seems. Okay. Um, then I go with cancel. 
Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Um, on behalf of the Civil Air Navigation Services Organization, we thank ICAO and the Council for bringing the important issue of aviation infrastructure um, funding to the Assembly and would like to express our support for Working Paper 17. Thank you. Uh, Brazil, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Brazil would like to support Working pa Paper 18 especially the, on the development of guidance on the management and operation of airports which are not economically viable. Thank you. Thank you. Italy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Italy uh, supports um, ICAO's working paper number 18 and uh, also agrees with the need of modernization of um, tariffs for airports and air navigation services contained in uh, ICAO DOC uh, 7100 7, and supports the ongoing work conducted on examining further guidance on cost recovery for the provision of airport and air navigation services. And uh, Italy um, would also like to support working paper um, 183 and welcomes the opportunity to conduct under No Country Left Behind initiative, dedicated workshop and seminars to share best practice among states, and is ready to give support even through economic resources and qualified staff. Thank you. Thank you. Yata. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, regarding working paper 17, IATA agrees with and supports the need to develop infrastructure investment mechanisms to support improvements in safety and efficiency and to support the reduction of CO2 emissions. Given that, it's also essential that all states adhere to one, financial transparency and user consultation based on ICAO's policies on charges for airports and air navigation services as reflected in document 9082 and the manual on air navigation services economics, document 9161. Two, investment based on appropriate regional plans or roadmaps to provide for a smooth transition to latest technology, and three, consultation with users to find the cost-efficient technology and infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you, Yetta. Mauritius. Thank you, Chairperson. Mauritius would like to support working paper 17 and 18. Thank you. Russian Federation. Thank you, Chair. We support uh, documents number 17 and 18 and the proposals that we worked so hard on in the working group in order to uh, make amendments to 9562. We would also like to know how the work is going to unfold on this document and uh, when the decision will be made. That's a question for the Secretariat. Thank you. Um, may I ask Rush, the Russian Federation to come and see the Secretariat afterwards to seek that answer? Would that be acceptable? Thank you. Uh, United States, please. My comment is on working paper 246. I don't, we don't support the paper, but I'm not objecting to it. I want to suggest that an assembly resolution for a global initiative should not be an ICAO imperative given the commitment of ICAO to the annual ICAO World Aviation Forum in which infrastructure investment imperatives are highlighted. Given ICAO's limited resources, this would seem duplicative. Thank you. Thank you, the U.S. There are no uh, other participants uh, seeking to uh, provide comments. So I'll now close the uh, intervention section of this discussion. Um, I would like to briefly go over the action paragraphs in working paper 17. Just to recall, the assembly is invited to A, review the work accomplished by ICAO in paragraphs two and three. B, endorse the organization's work program as presented in paragraph four, and C, consider the information contained in this paper for the update of Assembly Resolution 839-15, 
the consolidated, consolidated statement of continuing ICAO policies in the air transport field. Are there any objections to these action items? Thank you. Commission takes note. On paper 18, working paper 18, the Assembly is invited to A, review the work accomplished by ICAO in paragraphs 2, B, endorse the organization's work program as presented in paragraph 3, and C, consider the information contained in this paper for the update of Assembly, assembly Resolution A39-15, the consolidated statement of continuing ICAO policies in the air transport field. Are there any objections to these action items? <coughs> Botswana. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm much interested in the question that uh, Russia asked to uh, the Secretariat about when is this working paper going to come into force. Now, I don't know if we should individually go to the Secretariat to seek uh, clarity on this, or should we assume that uh, the answers will be given some way? Because it is uh, a very, very big problem in our uh, region. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, I will ask the delegate from Botswana and the Russian uh, Federation to please come see Mr. Toru, uh, my colleague here from the Secretariat, right after uh, we're done today with your question. And uh, Toru uh, committed to sending an, uh, an answer by email in writing later on uh, tonight or tomorrow. Okay? Thank you. Any objections to the action items in working paper 18? No? Okay, the Commission takes note. Concerning working paper 183 and 246, the Commission recommends that the views and comments expressed during the discussion be noted in the report and be taken into consideration in the organization's future work. Are there any objections? Regarding the action items in the uh, working paper from the United Arab Emirates, the Secretariat reminds me that uh, those action items are essentially already captured in the consolidated statement of uh, um, continuing ICAO policies, and that's the working paper that we will discuss uh, later on today. Okay, thank you. I see no other comments. This uh, closes I uh, agenda item 33. We will now move to uh, agenda item 34, aviation data monitoring and analysis. Thank you. So um, we have uh, four working papers uh, to discuss today, working papers uh, 19, 20, 21 by the ICAO Council, as well as uh, one, what's the as well as 184 uh, presented by AFCAC. So um, I would now like to ask the Secretary to present uh, the three working papers, 19, 20, and 21. Thank you. Thank you. 
In working paper 19, the council presents a paper on the ICO statistics program and big data analytics, which reports on the modernization of the ICO statistics program and its associated benefits, as well as activities related to big data, including details of the data sets and ongoing analysis carried out in collaboration with the UN, its agencies, international organizations, and academia. Uh, comprehensive and reliable aviation data analysis and forecasts are the basis for states and the industry to make well-informed decisions and align the regulatory and financing regimes with the projected growth of air, transport, air traffic demand. Article 55 of the Chicago Convention specifies the importance of conducting research and studies. The work of ICO on big data and the dissemination of its analytical results are therefore carried out keeping in mind this requirement of the Convention. Section 2 presents the achievements of the reengineering process of the ICO statistics program and the associated benefits such as increased coverage and quality of data, reduced time of processing and cost of sharing data. Uh, Section 3 summarizes the three big data sets being collected, processed and analyzed by ICO and the ongoing activities in developing big data analytics. Section 2 presents, uh, sorry, Section 4 of the uh, paper provides information on the ICO plan for future work related to statistics program and big data analytics. It will aim at supporting states and aviation stakeholders in using a data-driven approach to improving safety, operational and economic efficiency of air transport. Action for the assembly is presented in the executive summary. Thank you. Can I go to the next one? Uh, in working paper 20, the council reports on the activities in the areas of focus in the area of forecast and planning in accordance with Assembly Resolution A3915, which requested the Council to update the single set of long-term traffic forecasts. The updated forecasts indicate that global passenger and freight traffic will grow at 4.3% and 3.9% respectively on an annual basis till 2035. The first uh, ECO single set of long-term traffic forecasts was developed in 2016 in accordance with the requirement of the Assembly Resolution A3814, and the results were presented to the 39th session of the Assembly. To continuously meet the needs of the states and other stakeholders, Assembly Resolution A3915 requested the Council to A, develop and update forecast of future trends and developments in civil aviation and to make this available to member states and B, key forecasting methodologies and procedures reviewed and improved. On this basis, the Secretariat has continued to work with the Multidisciplinary Working Group on Long-Term Traffic, traffic Forecast, MDWG-LTF, under the Aviation Data Analysis Panel, ADAP, to update and customize the single set of long-term traffic forecasts. The updated forecasts provide estimation in intervals of 10, 20, and 30 years, and freight growth from 2015 to 25, 35, and 45. Section 2 outlines the data and model specifications for the update of the passenger and freight fo forecast, respectively. Section 3 presents the results of the updated passenger freight forecast. The detailed results by region and route groups are presented in the appendix. Section 4 of the paper provides information on ICOS plan for future work related to forecasting and planning, a part of the aviation data and analysis work program. It will focus on the continuous update of the existing forecasts with a further refinement of econometric methodologies and data sets, including the using big data, and the enhancement of the electronic interface for the development of a more detailed customized forecast to meet the varied needs of states and other stakeholders. Action for the assembly is presented in the executive summary. Thank you. Uh, regarding Working Paper 21 of the Agenda Item 34, in Working Paper 21, the Council presents a paper on the methodological framework of the aviation satellite account for the measurement of the economic contribution of aviation to the national economy. Notwithstanding the socioeconomic benefits brought about by aviation, its importance to the national economy appears not to be fully understood by states and the public due mainly to the acute shortage of reliable economic information related to aviation. While some researches and analysis were made to estimate the contribution of aviation to gross domestic product, GDP and jobs, there has been no internationally agreed methodological framework to measure them. Consequently, the credibility, reliability, robustness and accuracy of such estimations are often questioned and challenged. Against this background, the 39th session of the Assembly requested the Council to instruct the Secretary General to develop a methodological framework for the economic measurement of aviation activity, including aviation's contribution to GDP, the number of jobs created by aviation, aviation consumption, and the impact of aviation on balance of payments, A3915 refers. In accordance with the request, a methodological framework of the aviation satellite account was developed in lines with the internationally agreed standards of the system of national accounts, 
SNA, adopted by the United Nations Statistical Commission, UNSC. Section 2 of the paper summarizes the main features of the Aviation Satellite Account Methodological Framework, as, as well as its main concepts as well as its main concepts and benefits. As explained in paragraph 2.2, the term satellite account refers to an account that is closely linked, linked to the system of national accounts, but is not bound to employ exactly the same concepts or restricted to data expressed in monetary terms. A satellite account covers a specific industry or sector of particular importance to the national economy. Many elements shown in the satellite account are invisible to the national accounts. Either they are explicitly estimated in the making of national accounts, but are merged for presentation in more aggregated figures, or they are only implicit components of transactions which are estimated on an aggregated basis. Some sectors have already developed or are in the process of developing satellite accounts, for example, the tourism satellite account, uh, the debt of uh, the OECD, and others. Simply... Sorry, sorry, you're my first victim. <laughs> Can you straight go to the action items, please? And... Um, uh, just, to, just to conclude the information, the full document of the draft satellite account is available as a reference document, and action for the assembly is presented in the executive summary. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, who will present the next paper on behalf of AFCAC? South Africa, please. Thank you, Chair. Distinguished guests, I would like to present this working paper on behalf of the 54 contracting states who are members of the African Civil Aviation Commission, AFCAC. The working paper emphasizes AFCAC's collaboration with ICAO on the collection and analysis of st statistical data in the context of the liberalization of air transport in Africa through the full implementation of the Yamasukra decision and the establishment of the single African air transport market. The provision of comprehensive and reliable data analysis and forecast is essential for states and aviation stakeholders to make informed decisions, adapt their regulatory frameworks, and plan infrastructural development regimes in line with the expected growth in air traffic demand. Aviation data enables states to act proactively to eliminate inefficiencies and obstacles, reduce risks and uncertainties, monitor progress and performance, assess return on investment, and promote the financing of air transport development. Thus, in order to meet the objectives of, this, of the SATAM, and in line with Articles 67 and 55 of the Chicago Convention, AFCAC has established a data collection analysis mechanism known as the African Program on Aviation Data, FPAD. AFCAC's statistical program is part of the 2019 to 2021 Joint Prioritized Action Plan of all stakeholders, which include ICAO and covers transport, safety, security, environment, tourism, trade, and other related areas. Several benefits stem from the implementation of AFPAD, including increased coverage and quality of data, visibility of African states in respect of improved traffic, trade, connect connectivity, and tax reduction, reduction in processing times and data storage costs, increased interoperability that reduces administrative burdens and, and costs on member states, market monitoring and evaluation through integration of data for economic analysis. Aviation data collection, the, the, the aviation data collection program will enhance collaboration between AFCAC and the executing agency and all ICAO states programs. Ultimately, communication between the different databases will, be, will enable mutual access to data on Africa. In this regard, the assembly is invited to urge ICAO to cooperate with AFCAC on AFPED, the data system, which would represent a significant gain in African aviation data collection and analysis. IK was further requested to consider recommendations made in the executive summary of this working paper, which are taking, um, for IK to take note of the implementation of the data program FPED, take into account the information contained in this working paper when updating the assembly resolution a39, 15 of A39, urge ICAO to share aviation data submitted by AFCAC member states with AFCAC, the executing agents of the Yamasukri decision, to avoid duplication of effort and reduce the burden to member states, and finally urge ICAO to cooperate with AFCAC on the, on the African 
program on aviation data of part. Thanks very much, Chair. Thank you, uh, South Africa. I now open the floor for comments. Uh, remember to keep them uh, brief, and you can comment on any of these uh, working papers, but please mention which paper you're commenting on. Thank you. I will start with uh, Portugal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Portugal supports working paper 19 in general. We recognize the importance of the ICAO statistics program and its associated benefits, as well as activities related to big data. We acknowledge the importance of having comprehensive and reliable aviation data as an assumption to data-driven decisions and as a fundamental tool to the regulatory framework in aviation. However, in the future work in this area, we consider that ICAO data tools should be kept current and updated, and we encourage ICAO to make them made available to all member states without any costs. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Portugal. Italy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Italy welcomes and supports the ICAO's plan um, of uh, future work related to statistics program and big data analytics, aiming to improve data analysis and forecasting, enhancing partnership and collaboration with the United Nations, other international organizations, and also with the academic partners. The opportunity to use and exchange aviation data and statistics is strategic to support decisions of states, policymakers, industry, and aviation operator operators in order to improve safety, operational, and economic efficiency of air transport. Italy also agrees and supports the need to finalize the aviation satellite account for the measurement of direct economic contribution of, avi of aviation to national economy, in line with the international agreed standard of the system of national accounts. Guidance on measurements of the indirect and induced impacts of aviation on national economy will enable states to make data-driven policy making and more efficient and strategic evaluation for avi aviation development planning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, United Republic of Tanzania. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Tanzania supports working paper number 21. However, we have a comment to make. Uh, we've gone through the uh, tables of activities and have learned that uh, aviation fuel is grouped in a, in a general uh, category of tables. So we propose that uh, we, when we review, we needed to group aviation fuel as a separate category because it's a very uh, important category to be analyzed when we analyze the tables of the ASA. Thank you. Thank you. Cancel. Okay, thanks, um, Mr. Chairman. On behalf of the Civil Air Navigation Services Organization, we would like to support Working Paper 184 presented by AFCAC. Kenzo supports that the provision of comprehensive and reliable data analysis and focus is essential for states and aviation stakeholders to make informed decisions, adapt their regulatory framework and plan infrastructure development regime to the expected growth in, in air traffic uh, demand. Aviation data enables states to, to act proactively to eliminate inefficiencies and obstacles, reduce risks and uncertainties, monitor progress and performance, as, assess return on investment and promote the, the financing of air transport. Thank you for your attention, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I've got uh, Cabo Verde now. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Thank you very much, sir. Since we're short of time, I'm just going to say what I support. So we support 19, and we acknowledge the work that's been carried out by ICAO. And we would also like to support Working Paper 184 presented by AFCAC. Thank you, sir. Muchas gracias, uh, Yeta. 
Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, my comments re refer to Working Papers 20 and 21. Regarding Working Paper 20, if long-term demand forecasts are unrealistically high, they could result in inflated projections of CO2 emissions and resulting climate impacts. I have this concern that these could certainly be used to further encourage the flight chain movements. We know from developed economies that aviation markets mature once living standards reach a certain level and the number of air departures annually per head of population levels off. Using a forecast methodology or equation such as the one proposed in a working paper that has a constant elasticity with regard to GDP growth can cause an over-forecasting of passenger numbers in the long term. The correct forecasting approach should be to use a functional form that produces a stable trip frequency once GDP per capita passes a certain level, as in the 20-year passenger forecast produced by IATA. Um, regarding Working Paper 21, we support the satellite national accounts framework produced by ICAO and would encourage national statistics agencies to adopt it and produce data on the value added generated by air transport sectors. IATA and the Air Transport Action Group currently generate such data with their own intensive collections from the individual firms in the air transport supply chain. Systematic production of such data and a more detailed measurement of value added would be of great value. However, this data is not the same as the economic benefits for the wider economy generated by air transport, and we would caution against those that expect this exercise to lead to data that can be used to assess the benefits of air transport investments. Those benefits arise from the air transport service connecting cities and enabling flows of trade, people, investment, ideas and comp competitive pressures, all of which are fundamental to the development of supply-side GDP. More work will need to be to undertaken in order to measure the benefit of aviation as a transport provider rather than aviation as an employer, which is the approach that generates the value added and jobs numbers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I believe there is a, perhaps a technical problem with uh, getting the microphone in this section. So I know that uh, Le Cameroun, vous voulez uh, prendre la parole? Cameroun, I think you were trying to get the floor. So I'm going to give it to you now. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Cameroon would like to support uh, Working Paper 21 presented by IQ on the contribution of aviation in the national economy and Working Paper 184 presented by AFCAC. Thank you. And in the row behind, which country do you represent? Dominican Republic? Yes. Please go ahead. Okay, now it's working. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Dominican Republic apoya uh, last note. We support working papers 19 and 20 put forward by the Secretariat, and we'd like to call on the Assembly to take note of 551, an imp paper that we put forward, and to point out that next Monday we are going to have a celebration in CR7 AB at 2 in the afternoon. We'll give you all the details on that later. Now, with respect to details of reform and civilization in the Dominican Republic, they're all contained in that in paper. We're a small country, but we've made great steps forward in terms of aviation. Thank you, sir. Gracias. Y mil disculpas. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that there were two INF documents in this session. One is 499 by Argentina, and the second INF document is 551 by Dominican Republic. Sorry for that oversight. Uh, I have a long lineup of um, countries who want to speak. Again, if you want to support these papers, uh, I think there's enough uh, consensus in the room in that sense, uh, so no need to do that. I would ask you to only take the uh, floor if you have a specific comment about a specific section in the work, one of the working papers that you uh, disagree with. Okay. I will go with Malta. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll keep it brief. On working papers 19, 20, and 21, Malta thanks the ICAO's team for their continued work on data analytics. 
and supports the positions in relation to cost to member states, as indicated by Portugal and Italy. Thank you. Thank you. Guiana, you want to speak? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Guyana supports the working paper, um, except that we would like to echo which, the- Which paper? Uh, working papers are 19, 20, and 21. Okay. We would also like to echo the comments made by our colleagues from Portugal, uh, referencing the cost that these uh, data should be available free of cost to member states. Thank you. Thank you. Australia, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Australia's query is in relation to Working Paper 21 in that uh, the query is whether the methodology should include the aircraft manufacturing industry in the scope of civil aviation. This is to be consistent with the ICAO definition of aviation and will ensure that the draft satellite account of aviation fully measures the aviation contribution to the economy. Thank you. Thank you. United States. Thank you. I also have a comment on Working Paper 21. The United States objects to endorsing Action B regarding future work. We caution that the aviation satellite account methodological framework should not be rushed. Missing from the work plan is the important step of explicitly, rigorously vetting the framework with aviation stakeholder experts particularly those responsible for similar methodologies using aviation-specific data to measure the economic impact of aviation in countries where aviation-specific data is available. This should occur before the framework is presented to the Air Transport Committee. We do not agree with the proposed work plan until and unless additional vetting of the methodology has been completed. Thank you. Thank you, United States. Uh, Brazil, please. Yeah. No, so, sorry, Chairman. I forgot to push it. Okay. Uh, Paraguay. Thank you very much, sir. I would like to refer to previous comments made to the effect that ICAO should not make us pay for data and on statistics because these are one of the main things that we know when it comes to making decisions with respect to aviation. So we support a number of other delegations who stated we shouldn't have to be paying for that data. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Trinidad and Tobago supports the Secretary of Papers in 19, 20, and 21. We applaud the work done by the ICAO with regard to statistics but which to endorse the comments made earlier about the cost to member states. We understand the cost to IKEA for producing this data. However, especially for smaller states, the cost would make it prohibitive to use this data. So by making the data more available to states, whether free or in some cheaper means, would ensure that the work done by IKEA would be to the benefit of all. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take one more comment from Argentina. Thank you very much, sir. Just to say that we support Paraguay's comments with regard to cost. It should be free. Thank you. Now, si Cuba quiere la palabra. No, no entendemos su, escuchamos su. Microphone for Cuba, please. Okay, well, thank you, sir. We support the proposals made by Paraguay and Argentina in terms of cost recovery by ICAO. The, that data should be free. Thank you very much. We uh, will close now the uh, discussion section. And um, I would like to bring to your attention the action paragraphs in uh, Working Paper 19. The Assembly is invited to review the work accomplished by ICAO as presented in paragraphs 2 and 3. B. Endorse the organization's work program as presented in paragraph 4. 
and C, consider the information contained in this paper for the update of Assembly Resolution A39-15. Are there any objections? Thank you, the Commission uh, takes note. Next, uh, the action items in paragraph 20, which ask the Assembly to A, review the work accomplished by IKO in paragraphs two and three, B, endorse the organization's work program as presented in paragraph four, and C, consider the information contained in this paper for the update of Assembly Resolution A39-15. Are there any objections? Thank you. Then we can, I see your name on the screen. Do you need, uh, do you have an objection? No? Okay. Okay. Do you want me to go through here? I'll start with this, but then I'll give you the yes. give you phone, sir. Okay. Moving on to uh, working paper 21. The action paragraphs request the Assembly to A, review the ASA methodological framework described in paragraph two, B, endorse the organization's work program as presented in paragraph three, and C, consider the information contained in this paper for the update of Assembly Resolution A39-15. Before I ask for any objection, the Secretariat will take, uh, like to make a comment. Uh, thank you very much. And we, we just wanted to that, uh, uh, respond to that uh, comment uh, made by the United States. So it's very clear that uh, already is paragraph 3.1 of the working paper 21. Uh, this is a future work. This is related to action item little b. Uh, we said this is also that the request by the amendment by the council. We put the specific word in the first line, subject to approval by the ATC, Air Transport Committee. So all this work will be done subject to the approval by the Air Transport Committee. This Air Transport Committee will be organized in the autumn, immediately after the assembly. So we'll get uh, some guidance from the Air Transport Committee. Actually, that this is referred by the council. Then uh, we are catered to maybe amend uh, to this 3.1 little a, uh, this is a so-called major concern by the United States. The wording, little a, finalizing the ASA methodological framework will change to this one to the, the continued development of the ASA methodological framework. Then this is catered to the, the comment by the, the United States, if this is acceptable. Thank you so much. U.S., you have the floor. Thank you. I would like the clarification proposed by the Secretariat to include specifically the vetting language that I suggested. With that, I would be, uh, it would be acceptable. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, taken on board by the Secretariat. Are there any objections to this uh, working paper? Thank you very much. And uh, concerning working paper 184, the commission recommends that the views and comments expressed during the discussion be noted in the final report. Thank you very much. Including the uh, comment regarding the uh, availability of data at no cost. We now move to agenda item 35, economic development of air transport. The papers to be discussed are working paper 22 by the ICAO Council and 185 by AFCAC. There are also three information papers, um, 379 and 380 by India and 498 by Indonesia. Again, those uh, information papers will be noted in the report. Uh, working paper 22 is a long document. It's the assembly uh, resolution uh, on consolidated statement of IQ uh, policies. We will go to 185 first, and then we'll uh, spend more time on uh, working paper 22. So which member of AFCAC will present uh, working paper 185? 
Cabo Verde, por favor. Distinguished delegates, the delegation of Cabo Verde is presenting the working paper on behalf of 15 for uh, contracting states member of AFCAC. This paper presents the results of the first ministerial conference on air transport and tourism in Africa held in, uh, Santa, in March in Santa Maria, Salais, and Cabo Verde. The conference was hosted by Cabo Verde and was organized in collaboration with the African Union Commission, the ICAO, and UNWTO. Uh, the conference uh, resulted in the developing a package of um, action plan to foster the development of air connectivity, sunless uh, travel, and tourism in Africa in the context of the African Union Agenda 2063. These are the contained in the Ministerial Declaration Framework for a Plan of Action for uh, Air Transport and Tourism Development in Africa adopted by the conference. It has also addressed the need to harmonize uh, um, air transport and uh, tourism policy, including regulatory framework, taxation, and costs of travel, improve investment climate for the two sectors, and seek a way forward in the facilitation, facilitating travel in a, and insurance of visas in order to contribute in the, uh, with the, the development and growth of air transport and tourism in Africa. The ministerial declaration uh, calls on uh, ICAO, NWTO, AUC, AFCAC, and Af African Regional Economic Commission, the African Development Bank, and the African <coughs> Union Development Agency uh, assist partners, donors, and communities in on financial institutions to provide technical expertise, resources, and support for the implementation of the SAL declaration in line with their respective mandates. The framework for a plan of action is a tool to implement the SAL declaration from 2019 to 2021. Uh, the consistent it consisted in uh, 15 activities and uh, action under five main components, good governance and harmonizing policy, air connectivity and destination management, finan <coughs> financing for infrastructure development and capacity building, travel facilitation and strengthening uh, aviation and tourism sector. ICAO is one of the agencies better to collaborate with the African states, the African Union Commission and the AFCAC in carrying, carrying out most of activities and action plan in the, in the plan of action. Distinguished participants, and in conclusion, let me emphasize that the implementation of the declaration and framework for a plan of action it will ensure the sustainable development of the two sectors through enabling regulatory environment, current policies and good governance and quality infrastructures commensurated with the level of predicted uh, tourism and air traffic growth. The support of ICAO, UNWTO mm -hmm. and the other relevant agencies will require in carry, carrying out the activities and uh, action stipulated in the framework and action plan. Thus, the assembly is invited to request the council to provide technical expertise, resources, and support in collaboration with the relevant agencies for the implementation of SAL declaration as stipulated in the framework for action plan for the air transport and tourism development, development in Africa. So who is in the appendix B? Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Cabo Verde. I now open the floor for comments on this uh, working paper. Once again, if you plan to, or if you want to indicate your support, uh, just indicate the support, no need to justify. Uh, please reserve your time for uh, specific comments on uh, s specific sections of the paper. So uh, first I have cancel. Thank you, Chair. Uh, on behalf of Kenzo, we would like to support working uh, paper one, 186. Is it 186? 185. <coughs> 
That's it. I'd like to support, and um, Kenzo believes that implementation of sustainable air transport system under the single air traffic, uh, uh, air transport market system in Africa is a very good initiative that should be supported as far as possible. Um, enhanced collaboration involving all stakeholders in the value chain is, is uh, required to ensure growth and long-term sustainability of African market. Thank you very much. Chair. Thank you. Cameroon. Cameroon. Thank you, Chair. Cameroon supports uh, w Working Paper 185 presented by AFCAC. Uh, Morocco. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The uh, Kingdom of Morocco supports uh, the uh, conclusions uh, and the recommendations uh, proposed by uh, AFCAC as read by uh, Cabo Verde. And uh, I uh, hail the um, uh, initiative uh, together with the ICAO, the UNWTO. We urge ICAO as well as all specialized organizations to support this plan, especially in the provision of technical know-how and expertise. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I have Nigeria next. Nigeria supports working paper 185 as presented by Cabo Verde on behalf of 54 contracting state member of AFCAC. Thank you. Thank you. Italy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Italy supports working paper 22, appendix one, um, section uh, one, basic principles on long-term vision, with specific regard to long-term vision on liberalization of the market in a view of the adoption of the drug test of the international agreement, which includes air cargo. Are you commenting on 185? Ah, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. One, one <laughs> Italy supports uh, uh, working paper um, 185 uh, presented by AFCAC and welcomes the results of the first ICAO UNWTO and the policies for the development of air connectivity and tourism in the regional context in the spirit of no, no country left behind. Thank you. Thank you. Botswana. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Botswana supports uh, uh, working paper number 185. Being a log landlocked country and relying much on tourism for our, uh, on our economy and GDP, we really like the development of air transport to be advanced in our country. Thank you. Thank you. Again, if you, uh, I sense a strong support for this paper. Uh, there's no need to intervene to uh, provide support. Uh, take the floor if you, have, uh, if you don't support or if you have a specific comment. Uh, regarding the uh, the paper. So now, Egypt, please. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Egypt supports the working paper 185 presented by AFCAC as we recognize the importance to uh, develop the uh, air um, ties between the African uh, countries and therefore we support the recommendations made in this paper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Egypt. Uh, Paraguay. Gracias, Señor Presidente. Nosotros también como país mediterráneo Thank you very much. We know full well that this is a strategic imperative for countries such as ours, which are landlocked. And so for this reason, we would also like to support this working paper because this would really mean that no country would be left behind. Thank you very much. Gracias, señor presidente. I thank you, sir. Well, it's logical that we would support the working paper presented by AFCAC and in the same, by the same token, we would like to call on ICAO not only to take into account the contents of this working paper, but also to come up with an action plan to follow up on the actions being proposed in this working paper. Thank you, sir. 
Thank you. And I will go with one, one more comment, uh, Republica Dominicana, for favor. Well, the Dominican Republic supports Working Paper 185, presented by Cabo Verde on behalf of the members of AFCAC. We understand full well that the development of tourism and the aviation industry go hand in hand. And same thing for Dominican Republic. It's a absolutely fundamental for the development of our tourism industry and vice versa. Thank you, sir. This, uh, the discussion on this working paper. Uh, the Commission recommends that the views and comments expressed during the discussion will be noted in the report. Are there any objections? Thank you. We'll now turn to uh, working paper 22. To facilitate the discussion, we will show the um, relevant section of the document on the screen. We thank the delegates who sent comments ahead of time. Uh, when we get to the sections where we receive those comments or the, that relate to uh, the, the comments that we already received, we will show those comments on the screen with the original language and the comments provided by the delegates. And we will then be able to discuss those specific comments. I will now ask the Secretary to present briefly the paper. Uh, thank you very much. This Assembly Working Paper 22 contains a draft resolution on the consolidated statement of continuing ICAO policies in the air transport field. Uh, paragraph 1 of this main body of the text summarizes what we proposed to change to this Assembly resolution. And on this occasion, in order to facilitate your understanding, so why these changes are made, we put several notes uh, and also where the source of the information based for this base of the changes. So we indicate it in each changes in the appendix. Uh, also, this main body of the text, section two, reported the result of that uh, so-called uh, possible uh, global air transport plan. Uh, so now council decided to uh, action how we do, how we deal with this uh, global air transport plan. Uh, this consequence was summarized in the, this section two, and then we don't need to discuss anymore at this assembly. So our focus for this discussion is only appendix of this consolidated statement. And as I said, uh, and also chair said, uh, we summarize all the comments received so far received from you uh, in the track change mode, and we can show on the screen. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So we will go through the appendix. If you have comments that are regarding uh, style or possible grammatical errors, please send them to the Secretariat by email. I will soon uh, show the uh, email address, so it will be here if you want to get it after the meeting. Uh, we will focus on uh, comments that uh, change the substance of the text, okay, not the style or the grammar. So we will go section by section, okay? Beginning with the introduction of the section entitled Consolidated Statement of Continuing ICAO Policies in the Air Transport Field. You see the comments in track changes that have been inputted already by the uh, Secretariat. 
Are there any comments with respect to the uh, preamble? United Kingdom, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have no comments on the contents of the preamble, but I wonder if it might be possible to make the uh, lettering larger on the screen to help this uh, short-sighted Englishman. Thank you. I think you have a lot of support for that comment in the room. Guyana. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, Guyana believes the word sustainable um, should be retained in the text or the preamble. Uh, it will read, whereas, the, whereas air transport is of fundamental importance to the sustainable, we'd like to insert the word or recommend that we insert the word sustainable there. Thank you. In the second paragraph. Is that correct? In the second paragraph? We received a comment from the United States, which we'll show on the screen now. So this relates to the sixth paragraph in the preamble. You have the original language at the top in what the US uh, suggested below. Are there any comments on this U.S. Uh, suggestion? So um, the words over standard setting uh, was uh, were received by the U.S. and the Secretariat uh, deleted and associated guideline uh, guidance. Um, to keep the, the logic of the sentence. Canada. Thank you, Mr. Chair. If I could just have a little clarification as to whether we are dealing with standards or we are dealing with policies. Because my understanding and recollection is that standards have a specific nature and force and policies have a different nature and force. So to suggest that the air transport policies are now standards, uh, as the sentence seems to do, it's a fairly, in my view, significant change. Uh, it, it, it is elevating <clears throat> the, the status of the various policies to the level of a standard, which, which I think is, is a fairly dramatic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is, a, frankly speaking, three years ago, we had the same discussion. And actually, this word, over standard setting, were introduced three years ago. And then, that because, however, after that, we found out, as Canada mentioned, a bit tautology, because in the economic development field, there is no standards. Our highest level of the so-called is a policies, not standard. So if we put here implementation over standard setting, then a bit tautology. That's why the, the council's proposal is implementation of air transport policies and associated guidance. Then here, if we take another, again, back that word of over standard setting, then guidance material is never be standard setting. So then again, tautology happens. This is the reason why Secretariat, if we take into account, if we take that the US proposal, we need to delete guidance. But if further, if Canada's point, if we take into account, then we also need to delete policy, then going back to the original text. Having said that, that uh, we need to recall that I wanted to recall you that uh, uh, economic development field, there is no standard setting role. We are highest level is uh, global policy. Thank you so much. Given the history behind these words, uh, may I ask the U.S. to perhaps provide a bit uh, more explanation as to uh, the reason for the change, suggested change, please? 
The reason for the change is because we agree with Canada. There are no standards in this arena, and we want to make that clear. If you delete over standard setting as proposed, the concern is that it's left open, or, or why else make the change to delete standard setting? We want to make clear that we are dealing with policies and guidance only and not standards. So to the extent this can be clarified to make that plain, it would be very welcome. So I, I think we're all on the same page then. It's just a matter of finding the words to express the, the notion. Okay. It'd be acceptable to the U.S. if we, uh, the security came up with language for Monday, uh, Monday's discussion? Yes? Thank you. If there are no more comments on the preamble, we will move to um, the next page in English, A2. So that's paragraphs 1 to 12. First changes were made to paragraph 5. Any comments? Paragraph 6, paragraph 12, thank you. We now move to section 1 of Appendix A. In the preamble, we receive comments regarding the second paragraph. Can we show those uh, comments, please? So again, you have the original language uh, at the top and uh, comments from the United States below. Where the, really the US wanted to uh, change traffic for commercial and the Secretariat added including traffic rights. My first comment to, or question to the US is, uh, does this language work for you? You seem, you seem to see a difference between a commercial right and a traffic right, so. Well, one term is broader than another, but as right. edited, it's fine. And I'm, if I'm squinting, it's because I'm trying to read the okay. page. Thank you. Any comments regarding this paragraph? Thank you. We now move to the fifth paragraph. Uh, we also receive comments from the United States and the uh, European states. So you have the original language at the top and then the, um, the two proposals. I should add that the um, changes proposed by the European states uh, seem to me to be pretty well aligned with uh, a previous council decision. But it is more specific than what the United States proposed. Can you make it bigger? Yeah. Apologies, the US that's as big as we can make it. Can you read it? <coughs> no? She can't read it. Yeah, Is this a little bit bigger, better? Mr. Chairman, may I impose upon you to read it out loud slowly? Certainly. It's the shading that makes it very obscure. Okay. This, 
specific meaning of the shape. Do you want me to read the original text or just the comments? So I'll start with the U.S. comments. Based on the U.S. comments received, the text would read, whereas there is a need to build understanding of the benefits and challenges of liberalization, period. European states proposed, whereas there is need to maintain momentum and support for the future development of a modern and ambitious multilateral agreement among member states by building understanding of the potential benefits and challenges of liberalization and barriers to opening market access, both in terms of passenger and cargo services, and in particular, to identify what states need to assist them in pursuing liberalization. So the notion of understanding is in both proposals. European states uh, propose to be a bit more specific in terms of um, the ultimate goal, I guess. And also introduce a notion of assisting states who want to pursue liberalization. So my question to the uh, delegate from the U.S. would be, given that the notion of understanding is in the European states' proposal, do you agree with that language? When I think of the direction from the Air Transport Committee uh, following consideration of the ATR P15 report and that ATC direction was uh, supported by the council, I'm thinking, I, I think that this is a little bit, this goes further than what the Air Transport Committee determined in terms of maintaining momentum and support for modern and ambitious multilateral agreement. I don't recall those terms being in the Air Transport Committee decision. And what is modern and what is ambitious have been debated within the ATRP. So I, I don't agree with the European proposal. I wonder if there couldn't be some way to merge the two proposals, and again, maybe that could be prepared for Monday consideration. Okay, um, just as a reminder, uh, the last two lines are coming verbatim from the ATC, yes. from the Air Transport uh, Committee. And my comment is not on the last two lines. Okay, the first two lines then. Yes. Okay. In that case, uh, I would like the uh, delegate from the U.S. as well as um, appropriate delegates from 
one or more EU member states to perhaps stay behind today and get your heads together to come up with a language that works for everybody. And then you can send it to us uh, by tomorrow evening and we'll look at it again on Monday. Hopefully we will close the discussion then. Does, is this acceptable to first the US? And uh, does anybody oppose in the EU? It's good? Okay, we'll proceed that way. Thank you. Now we'll go back to the uh, appendix, section one. Uh, apologies, there's another comment from the United States regarding the ninth paragraph in the preamble, which reads, whereas consumer interest should be given due regard in the development of policies and regulations of international air transport, the United States proposes to add national, national, and the Secretariat added in regional, given uh, the fact that some regional uh, arrangements uh, have covered consumer interest. Uh, I would, as chair, actually propose to say national or regional. Are there, are there any objections to my proposed wording? National or regional. I see no uh, opposition. Great, thank you. We'll now look at uh, paragraph four in appendix, the appendix, section one. In the English version, it's page A4. There are some editorial comments. Any objection, objections? Afghanistan? Do you have a comment? Oh, sorry, ECI. For, go ahead. It's uh, with respect to uh, paragraph 9. Paragraph 9 we'll get to later. Okay. Uh, paragraph 7. Any comments? Very well, paragraph nine. Paragraph nine, we have comments from ACI, so we'll show the text and the comments received by both ACI and the European states. So ACI proposed to uh, remove the mention, including in case of massive airport and airline disruptions, is that correct? Yes, uh, and actually the next paragraph would be new. So let's just focus on the comment from ACI. Are there any objections to uh, the deletion of including in case of massive airports, airport and airline disruptions or any comments? Secretary would like to speak. Uh, thank you very much. The, this is a, there's a specific reason to be included here by the council. The reason is the council work program included that this that the massive airport and airline disruptions, and then this matter is keep going since the middle of this current triennium. And then that the January session of the council again requested the secretariat uh, to going back to this matter. So we are this matter, this uh, issue, massive disruption is continuing issues. Uh, even though ATRP right now that uh, didn't that, uh, deal with it, however, the council is still working. This is the reason why that the council's working paper includes this specific wording, but then that may, uh, there is some that uh, may, if there is some compromise text, I have no problem. And if that uh, nobody support, I have no problem. But this is the background. Thank you. Okay, so uh, it appears that um, we can't delete the whole notion of uh, massive disruption. But uh, I'd like to propose wording and get uh, CI's uh, 
comment on that? Sure. Um, oh, go ahead. You want to speak? Go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, I mean, the, the, the clause is, is problematic as it singles out airports uh, and a specific event. So, I mean, giving regard to the IKO core principles, it, it should be considered by all stakeholders and not only airports in all instance of the traveling uh, consumer's journey, and not only in the case of massive disruption. Okay, uh, keeping that in mind, uh, would it be acceptable to say, including in case of massive disruptions impacting aviation? Uh, yes, we concur with that suggestion. Are there any comments on this uh, revised wording, which would read, include in case of massive disruptions impacting aviation. Thank you, we will go with that wording. We now have a new uh, paragraph to add to this section. And you see it on the screen, I'll read it. Request the Council to support strongly the exchange of views on the application of the ICAO core principles on consumer protection in an appropriate forum in order to share experiences and good practices which could help encourage long-term operational convergence and compatibility in this area at a global level. Are there any comments? EU, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just to say these uh, comments uh, forwarded on behalf of ECAC and European Union states, and these really just take up the action points which had been suggested in our working paper we discussed last week. Thanks. Okay. Any other comments? United States? I am uh, concerned with the term regulatory convergence. Regulatory convergence suggests that regulations would be done in one consistent way. And that suggests going to standards and recommended practices. And that is something that the, um, the ATRP said not, not to do and that we discussed the other day and agreed not to do. So I, I think um, compatibility is fine, but I would ask to delete regulatory convergence. It reads, uh, I understand, it reads operational convergence, but uh, I take it that's a section that you have an issue with. Would it be acceptable to the US to say, uh, to the EU, uh, sorry, to say which could help encourage compatibility in this area instead of convergence? To me, convergence means you eventually do the same thing, as opposed to compatibility, which means that it, could, it can coexist or is not contradictory. Thank you for the suggestion. I would just, I think we'll, we'll consider that carefully. I'll just point out to say is operational convergence. So the intention here is to distinguish between convergence of regimes, but regimes which are, can be operated together. Um, so I think that's an important distinction. But we'll take into account the suggestion. Okay. If you're looking at it from a, an operational point of view, I think compatible is probably the appropriate. But uh, think about it and come back to, to the Secretariat with uh, wording. And so that will be reflected in the, uh, the final report. So we'll see that uh, it'll be in the final report. We'll discuss it again on Monday. Uh, United Arab Emirates, you want the floor? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, United Arab Emirates, uh, support the comments coming from the United States. Okay, thank you. Moving on to paragraph 11 on page A5 in the English version of the document. Any comments? Friends? Excuse me. Yes, excuse me. Can I just come back to the previous point? 
I want to make sure we're good. what are we going to be discussing next time around. I'm not trying to make things difficult for you, but it's not quite clear to me what we'll be doing. We have online changes, drafting changes here, which are in English. So we need to have a bit of time to be able to discuss this and to think about it in terms of the meaning, whether it be in English or French or anyone's language. So I understand that we are going to revisit this paragraph at our next meeting, but will it refer to the proposal you made or is it going to be a more broad discussion? Well, here's what I'd like to see. I'd like European Union and the U.S. get together and agree on a compromise text, compromise wording. But as chair, I want you to take into account the fact that convergent goes quite a bit long further than the term compatibility. And if I understood the notion is operational convergence, so it's almost as if by that term you mean compatibility of systems. So keep that in mind when you meet with the U.S. And please don't forget to send us revised wording between now and tomorrow evening. Is that clear? Yes, that is clear. So we'll take into account your proposal when we discuss. Fine. Thank you, sir. So we also received comments from the United States regarding uh, paragraph 11, uh, where we would change the word assistance for guidance. And I have comments from Yetta. Apologies, Mr. Chairman, it was uh, relating to the earlier point uh, on, on 9X. Um, okay. uh, I think it's important to specify in line with IATA's comments uh, on the working paper. Um, if we're going to talk about compatibility, then specify clearly compatibility with what? Uh, I, IATA would suggest that, that should be clearly stated. Uh, compatibility with the core principles um, and with international instruments that reflect those principles to make sure um, that we're quite precise in that point. Thank you. Thank you. So that would be a comment for, uh, that the U.S. and EU should uh, consider. Are there any comments regarding the uh, U.S. Uh, suggestion on paragraph 11? I see no comments. We'll move on. Paragraph 12, we uh, received comments from, so there were changes from the Secretariat, as you can see, but also comments from the United Arab Emirates and the United States. I would like to remind the United Arab Emirates that uh, the issue raised in its comments uh, were already settled in previous discussions um, and there was no support to continue the examination of these international instruments. Um, so uh, I, uh, I am not uh, leaning towards opening that uh, discussion again, um, but I would like the floor to uh, focus on the uh, comments from the United States, which refers to uh, proposals presented during the 6th uh, ET Conf. Are there any comments? Guiana, please. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Sorry to take us back, but can we just look back at the one where we changed the word from assistance to guidance? Yes. Um, in terms of uh, language uh, for small developing states, 
I think the word assistance is a little bit stronger and perhaps preferred over guidance. Um, assistance goes a little bit beyond uh, guidance. Um, really like to have a clarification from the United States uh, as to why the, the change from assistance to guidance. Thank you. May I ask the delegate from the US to uh, take the floor, please? Thank you. <clears throat> the term assistance is vague, and it could be understood as financial assistance or some other form of assistance. And the Air Transport Committee determined that what the ATRP should do is work to identify gaps in ICAO's guidance and tools to give states the tools they need to pursue liberalization and development of their markets. Guidance is a more accurate term to capture what the Air Transport Committee uh, instructed for future work of the ATRP. That's good. Thank you. And as a participant of those discussions, I uh, would agree with the U.S. Okay. Um, going back to 12, any comments regarding the addition of uh, the mention of the uh, six worldwide AT conf in paragraph 12? No, thank you very much. We now move to section two, air carrier ownership and control. So the European states would like to add a paragraph. So it would be a fifth paragraph to the preamble, which would read, whereas discussions in the air transport regulation panel indicate wide support for ongoing work to develop a multilateral instrument on the liberalization of air carrier ownership and control. Any comments regarding this uh, requested addition? Thank you. Moving on to the paragraphs one to seven on page A6 in the English version. We have uh, changes proposed in paragraph six, as well as comments from the United Arab Emirates and the European States, as well as France. First, any uh, comments related to the additions uh, suggested by the United Arab Emirates? United Kingdom. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, but uh, I, for one, can't read those comments. And uh, I don't think, y you know, we're, we're, we're blasting through these uh, amendments very quickly. Uh, in very poor light with very little to see. So I think uh, anything we discuss today has to be subject to actually seeing this properly and, and being able to consider it uh, um, where we can actually read it properly. Thank you. Okay, let me read uh, the only the addition in wording L slowly so that you can write it down. So the United Arab Emirates suggests to add in the second line in line with the IKO long-term vision for international air transport liberalization. It says in talking, but I think they mean taking into account 
free rider concerns of states. Okay. So let's just focus on that first. The EU. Thank you. Just to clarify, actually, uh, where you had the European states, new paragraph following paragraph six, I think maybe it wasn't clear in our submission. That is, in fact, to replace. It's a, mod, uh, a revision of the existing paragraph six, just to clarify. It's not because it actually repeats what is already in the previous paragraph. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Malta. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I was just trying to see if maybe a way forward might be if you can circulate this presentation to the mailboxes, because from over here, it's really hard to see anything on that screen whatsoever. Unfortunately, it would not be practical to print and provide hard copies given the time constraints and the number of participants. Can, 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 these, can these lights be turned off? Unfortunately, we cannot um, show the text on both screens. But I uh, have asked to see whether we could at least turn off the lights here at the front so it would be a bit easier. We'll see. But we don't have time to print and circulate uh, hard copies, fortunately. So for delegates in the back row, is this a little bit better? No? Okay, I will, the only thing I can do is to read slowly so that you can write it down. Okay, so you have the paper with you. Uh, the secretary changes are already in the paper. So we'll focus on what the comments that we received uh, yesterday or today. So again, I just read the comments from the United Arab Emirates in line with the ICAO long-term vision for international air transport liberalization and taking into account free rider concerns of states. Are there any comments regarding this suggestion? United States, please. Thank you. This is regarding paragraph six. I just want to clarify. Yes. Um, could, could the United Arab Emirates just explain why the change and I have a special request that at the next assembly, because we are in Montreal, could we perhaps be seated alphabetically by the French language? And then I am a Tazuni and I'm much closer up. <laughs> Thank you. Can the uh, United Arab Emirates please take the floor to explain the uh, rationale for the suggested change, please? Yes, Mr. Chairman. The comments the United Arab uh, United Arab Emirates proposed the below uh, above amendment uh, as the proposed convention is part of ICAO overall liberalization efforts and objectives. While the free rider issue is a well recognized concern under ICAO's working uh, paper number 16. Uh, for that, request the council when approach to continue the development of government, as we say. Thank you.
Okay. Um, regarding the mention of free rider, I note that uh, France uh, proposed to delete it in the original paragraph. And um, I, uh, I'm also, uh, I also recall that uh, in those discussions in the ATRP, there were uh, concerns expressed. So I'm looking at the proposed wording of the European states to replace the paragraph. Uh, it does mention remaining issues of concern, but in more general term, which I think is a statement of fact. Would there be any objection if we uh, use the language from the EU for this paragraph. Sure, I'll read it. So the European states uh, suggest to replace paragraph six with the following. Requests the council to address the remaining issues of concern in order to be able to make progress towards a convention on foreign investment in airlines. So I'll read again. Requests the Council to address the remaining issues of concern in order to be able to make progress towards a convention on foreign investment in airlines. So I'd like to ask the United Arab Emirates for its view on my proposal. Mr. President, this is not substantial or sufficient. Thank you very much. Do you want to be more precise? Is that what you mean? I think this is not a uh, very good substantial issues here and also uh, we link our view and line with ICAO uh, long uh, uh, term vision your excellency yes right. but do you agree that the remaining issues of concern in the ATRP as uh, regarding the convention on foreign investment in airlines relate to the free rider issue We feel, Your Excellency, that uh, the, the, the working paper should be more precise on, on that issue. This is, a this is only a statement. Thank you. But those who participate in the ATRP are fully aware of what the remaining issues are. And we all know it's free rider. So again, in order to progress, I don't think we lose anything by not including free rider. I think it's, it will not be lost in the discussion if we don't mention it. What I would propose is uh, to do a bit of give and take would be to include your mention of the ICO long-term vision, but not specify free rider. Would that be acceptable to the uh, United Arab Emirates? Yes, yes. I think it is good compromise for that. Okay. So that will be the compromise. Okay. So, from the EU language. Yes. To put to this. Refer to the long term vision. The long term vision. Yeah. Somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. So we will go with the language proposed by the uh, European states. We will add the mention of the long term vision, but we will not mention free rider. Okay. Thank you.
Section three, are there any comments? The Secretariat had no proposed changes. Section four, the Secretariat did not propose any changes. Any comments from the floor? Very well, that takes us to Appendix B, taxation. Slight change to paragraph, the fourth paragraph in the preamble. I believe that's acceptable. It's simply ref, referring the, uh, referencing the right number for the assembly. There were no other, other proposed changes. Sorry, uh, Mauritius. Chair, um, my apologies. I would like to go back on uh, item uh, paragraph 11, where we suggested the change from uh, assistance to guidance on page A5. If you allow, if you allow us, can I, can I take up that issue again? What is the issue, very quickly? Actually, I want to go back on the comment that was made by Guyana. I understand that the word assistance include, of course, some sort of assistance like the US said, maybe financial. But I think it is a substantial change in the word guidance because I consider some small or less developed states that may require, uh, in addition to guidance, they may require some sort of assistance also, which if we change the word from assistance to guidance, may not be covered. So I believe that the, the wording assistance were there, so changing it to guidance may be to the disadvantage of small states or uh, less developed states. It's okay maybe for the developed states, but it will definitely be a disadvantage so to small states. I, I understand your concern. Uh, having taken part in the discussions, um, I tend to agree with the United States that the purpose was to develop guidance material. Now, having guidance material is a form of assistance for developing states who want to liberalize but may need tools to achieve that. So. Uh, but there were never any discussions regarding technical assistance which would have a, a budgetary impact. So I tend to agree with the United States. I think guidance is the appropriate word here, but uh, rest assured that um, I think that's the purpose of ICAO is to assist states in, in developing by providing tools and uh, guidance material. So I think by using the word guidance, the, uh, the notion is captured as as far as uh, liberalization is concerned. So we're uh, at uh, Appendix C now, Section 1, Charging Policy. So the only comments we need to consider uh, came from the Secretariat and they are in the working paper. So section one, are there any comments regarding the changes proposed in the preamble as well as uh, paragraphs one to 10 as mentioned or as stated in the working paper? No, thank you. Section two. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, I went too quickly. Um, we have a proposed, uh, a proposed change from the United Arab Emirates for the preamble.
in the sixth paragraph. So if you look at your working paper, in the third line, the United Arab Emirates suggests to change the word interests for investments. So again, the sixth paragraph of the preamble of section one of appendix C, in the third line, the word interests would be changed to investments, Canada. Mr. Chair, I would say that the original text probably covers the issue at hand better as it is a broader, uh, the financial interests of the service providers are broader than specific investments. And well, the investments are oftentimes the most relevant, the financial interests are what drives the operations of the service providers. And I think balancing the interest between the broader financial interest rather than specific investments is uh, probably more appropriate in this context. Okay, thank you, thank Canada. You. ACI? Um, ACI actually supports uh, Canada's intervention. Uh, the word interest is in fact uh, broader and it, it, I think we should keep that text. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Changing interest, I'm speaking as a chair here, uh, changing interest for investments does, does change the, I think the substance of that sentence. Um, and also air carriers do not make investments in most countries um, in the, uh, the provision of uh, airport and air navigation services. So I think it would uh, lead, lead to confusion if we use investments. So I uh, would propose that we keep the original language or the original word interest in this paragraph. Thank you. Okay. So on paragraph, uh, any other comments regarding the preamble to section one of appendix C? No, let's move to page A11 in the English version, paragraph two. There are some uh, slight changes proposed by the Secretariat. Any objections to those? No. Let's look at paragraph seven. Any comments? No. Paragraph eight. Paragraph nine. ACI? Sorry, ACI? No? You're done? Okay, your name was appearing on my screen. Paragraph ten. Thank you. Moving to section two. In the preamble, we have changes uh, or deletion of the first paragraph. Any comments? As well as the third paragraph. Par this, the fifth paragraph. This new text. Any comments? No. The next paragraph, any comments? Last two paragraphs, any comments? Uh, 
Very good. Paragraphs one to seven. So paragraph two, there's new text. Any comments? Paragraph four. Thank you. Paragraph five, we have a proposal from the United Arab Emirates. So in addition to what the Secretariat proposed, so if you look at the new wording proposed by the Secretariat, the United Arab Emirates proposes to change the word elevating in the third line to exploring. Any comments? No comments, so we will use exploring. Paragraph six. And paragraph seven, any comments? Thank you. Moving on to Appendix D. The Secretariat proposed changes in the third paragraph of the preamble and the fourth, very minor. No comments. In the ninth paragraph, there's new text. Any comments? Last paragraph of the preamble, any comments? Thank you. Paragraphs one, two, four, including the subparagraphs. Any comments from the floor? Thank you. Moving to Appendix E. Any comments regarding the changes proposed by the Secretariat in the preamble? Thank you. Paragraphs 1 to 3 in Section 1. Any comments? Thank you. Section two, first paragraph. Oh, sorry, second paragraph in the preamble. Any comments? Thank you. Paragraph one, we have comments from the United States. So in addition to the changes proposed by the Secretariat, the United States would like to Insert. Um, okay, so the only change is just the continue development So finally, okay. So the United States would like to add after the word two in the first line the following. Continue the development of. So the sentence would read, requests the council to finalize, sorry, go back. Requests the council to, in, to continue the development of the aviation satellite account. The rest of the paragraph would remain as it is in your working paper. Any comments on this suggested change? Thank you. Oh, sorry, Guyana. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. If it doesn't hurt too much, is it possible to change um, the a ah, direct or a direct impact to the direct impact? Various data to measure the 
direct impact? Thanks. We'll do that. Any comments regarding paragraphs 1 to 4 in section 2? Thank you. Any comments regarding section 3? Thank you very much. This concludes item 35. Now moving to item 36. not be using the screens anymore so may I ask the uh, person to bring the lights up again because now I have problems reading my papers <laughs> who's in charge here we go thank you very much the last item is uh, on the agenda is item 36 other issues there are three working papers to be discussed. Working paper 469 by Cuba, 387 revised by Qatar, and 247 by the United Arab Emirates. I would also uh, like to mention that there are three information papers, work, working pa uh, information papers 475, 476 by the Islamic Republic of Iran, and 487 by the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. Those information papers are noted, but will not be presented. We will uh, present the papers one after the other, and then we will discuss them. Uh, may I ask uh, Cuba to present its working paper, please, briefly? <coughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Thank you, sir. It is my honor to present working paper on the application of unilateral measures that have been imposed on the Republic of Cuba by the United States, which impede the sustainable economic development of air transport and violate the Chicago Convention and hamper the ICAO No Country Left Behind initiative. For almost 60 years, Cuba has been subject to a financial blockade by the United States. And we're seeing more and more threats to our sovereignty. When it comes to air transport, new unilateral measures have been put forward by the government of the U.S. over the past year in June 2019, there was a decree which prohibited all corporate air travel from the U.S. to Cuba. They're also taking action against Cuban-owned entities in third countries. As a result, we have had to share or cancel, rather, agreements that we had with th third parties in other countries. We've seen individuals blocked from travel in Italy, France, and Mexico. They suspended international services used for the sale and emission of tickets. This is a violation of the treaty, and the U.S. has continued in May 2019 to use Article 13 of the Hens Burden Law, whereby they can attempt to confiscate properties which were taken over by the Cuban state in the 1960s. The first concrete application of Article 13 in civil aviation 
was only 13 days later with the request in a Florida court against American Airlines and LACAM Airlines Group to have carried passengers and cargo to the international airport in Havana. And so many individuals who have seen the effects of these measures are actually represented here. So these discriminatory measures of the U.S. blockade against Cuba violate the Chicago Convention, and quite clearly so. ICAO is supposed to guarantee principles such as the sovereignty of states, non-discrimination, equal opportunity, and trade equity. So on behalf of the government of Cuba, we would call on the 40th Assembly of ICAO to reaffirm once again that the unilateral measures and extraterritorial measures taken by the U.S. are affecting the sustainable development of air transport with particular impact on developing countries. Secondly, urges all states to avoid applying any such legislation that can affect the sovereignty of a third party state. Third, to ensure free trade when it comes to civil aviation. And fourth, understand that ICAO is the only entity which should be taking a look at the orderly and harmonious development of civil aviation and should condemn the unilateral actions taken by the United States. And measures should be taken by, o by ICAO to confront this situation. Thank you, sir. Qatar to please uh, present its working paper. Thank you, Chair. The growth in air traffic in the Gulf has led to additional traffic and many challenges around managing air navigation in the region. Also, the civil aviation authorities are called upon to change the way that they work with other CAAs in order to offer new opportunities in civil aviation. It is also important to not politicize and to use itineraries and routes properly while maintaining the sovereignty of the states and allowing for commercial traffic to occur. This means profits for the industry. Without affecting safety and security. The, in this, at this assembly, we call upon the states to not politicize or to drag conflicts into trade issues. Th these issues in affect the environment and safety and security, we call for respect of A3915 and to not adopt unilateral actions that could affect the sustainable and orderly development of international civil aviation. What has resulted are long hours, flight hours, as a result of closure of routes, and this has negatively affected CO2 emissions and has led to an increased fuel consumption, knowing that Qatar is committed to promoting the Corsia plan. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Qatar. Uh, let's move now to the uh, United Arab Emirates, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The UAE would like to invite the Assembly to consider the establishment of a Global Aviation Competitiveness Index in order to ensure effective and result-oriented deployment of limited resources, it is important that aviation policymakers have a comprehensive understanding of the state of their national aviation sector's competitiveness. This working paper proposes f six fundamental factors of, pro of productivity that drive outcomes and are core levers for, po for policy interventions in a structured manner. The UAE is proposing to create a competitive and comprehensive industry-centric index that identifies the underlying factor of productivity and is based upon their outcomes, 
largely considers quantitative data, allows decision makers to compare apples to apples in order to make well-informed choices. The proposed data source of each of the indicator indicators is presented in the appendix of this working paper, and we request the Council to evaluate the index methodology proposed in the appendix. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Yannette Debert-Bemretz. We will now discuss the wor these uh, working papers. Uh, I would first like to open the floor for discussions on the working paper 247, 247 from the United Arab Emirates. Any comments? United States, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. We suggest that this proposal is uh, appropriate for referral to the ATRP to consider as part of its work plan to help build the case for liberalization. It could help states understand the benefits to be derived from a liberalization environment. We propose that the ATRP consider refining the methodology and identify and define the precise factors and a method of measurement so that the results are meaningful. If it can be done in a meaningful way, then it would be appropriate for ATRP to identify drivers of competitiveness in liberalized markets so that other states can learn and reap the benefits of aviation liberalization. Thank you. Thank you. Yata, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Ayata would like to welcome and support the recognition in Working Paper 247 that policies that support the sustainable development of the air transport industry in line with global best practice can support states' competitiveness, productivity and overall welfare. Understanding relative performance across a range of different policy measures can help states determine priority areas for reform and improvement, enabling states to allocate scarce resources as effectively as possible. IATA has already done a considerable amount of, area, of work in the area of competitiveness, albeit with a rather different set of indicators or pillars than those identified in the working paper. In order to avoid unnecessary duplication of effort, and as a first step, IATA would be very happy to present the work that it has done to ICAO. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brazil? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Brazil supports the working paper 247. However, we feel that the pillars and indicators presented on the appendix should be referred to, to a technical dis discussion by the appropriate panel. Thank you. Thank you. Canada? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Canada would note that, uh, as has been suggested by other commenters, the methodology could perhaps be made more clear and elaborate and notes that work on competitiveness has been done in other fora and it would be important to ensure that ICAO does not expend resources duplicating efforts made elsewhere. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Thank you. We now, uh, I now open the floor for uh, comments regarding working paper 469 and working paper 387. Bahrain. With reference to working paper 387 revised, presented by the State of Qatar, Bahrain wishes to draw your kind attention to the ICAO Council's decision number 216-6 dated March 1st, 2019, which requires ICAO to refrain from making any comments on this matter during its appeal to the International Court of Justice. Further, the Council agreed that this matter to remain seized and suspended until the ICJ render its decision. Mr. Chairman, Bahrain has a serious concern as Working Paper 387 re revise relates to a subject that is currently argued due to its political and legal complexity at the International Court of Justice. 
Bahrain is formally objecting in this working paper and opening the discussion on it and respectfully request the meeting to consider suspension of any discussion on this working paper in compliance with the ICAO Council decision. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Argentina. Yes, thank you, sir. Argentina supports the historical position adopted by Cuba and put forward for years. Once again, Cuba has put forth a view that it's under an economic, commercial, and financial embargo, and it's clearly laid this out in Working Paper 469. We support this working paper. Thank you, sir. Nicaragua, you have the floor. Thank you very much, sir. Nicaragua supports Working Paper 469. The reason being that if you take a look at the Chicago Convention, it's quite clear that civil aviation should be organized in a secure and safe fashion, and it should be based on an equal opportunity and carried out in a safe and secure fashion. Now, this measure does not respect the rights of the Cuban state, or and it hampers international civil aviation. If you take a look at the ICAO Convention, the UN Charter, and international law, it runs counter to all those three, and it affects negatively on Cuban civil aviation. Thank you, sir. Gracias. Venezuela. Thank you, Nicaragua. Venezuela, you have the floor. La República Bolivariana. The Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela is firmly in support of the two papers presented by Cuba and Qatar. We are not in favor of any discriminatory measures that run counter to the Chicago Convention that can have any effect on civil aviation and its orderly development. We already presented our points of view in Working Paper 487. We've seen increased pressure coming from various states affecting civil aviation, and they're taking political dis decisions when it should be simply based on the provisions of the Convention. Nevertheless, we have showed in Venezuela that even though we are under a lot of pressure and adverse conditions, we have still been able to respect our standards with respect to the USAP and the USOP audits. More than 90% effectiveness and compliance with respect to ICAO requirements. What's going on here affects the rights of the Venezuelan people and the same thing goes for the other countries affected here. And it also runs counter to the UN Charter, where it's very clear that we're supposed to work on cooperation to ensure economic development, particularly in developing countries. Now, if you take a look at the whole notion of maintaining pace and in peace, rather, and ensuring cooperation amongst countries, no countries left behind is what we should be basing our activities on, nothing else. I invite Saudi Arabia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The KSA supports Bahrain regarding the uh, paper 387 and agrees that uh, Bahrain uh, has a rational decision. And we remind you of the Council decision 216-6. I would refer you to the Chicago uh, Convention as, uh, and particularly Article 86, because this matter is being studied internationally. Therefore, it should not be discussed in this forum. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, United Arab Emirates, please. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The United Arab Emirates supports what was said by Bahrain and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. 
we reject the WP 387. It is an explicit violation of uh, this uh, international organization rules. The International Court of Justice studies this matter right now. I would like to remind you of the Council decision 216-6. We are supposed to wait till we uh, receive the decision to be made by the International Court of Justice. I would like to refer you as well once again to the uh, Chicago Convention in its Article 86. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Egypt, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Egypt supports the interventions and the objections made by Bahrain, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates regarding the working paper number 387, as this paper violates the decisions made by ICAO, as well as the 1944 Chicago uh, Convention. Any subject that was referred to the International Court of Justice should not be discussed within this commission, and I would like to to officially put on record uh, our objection. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Egypt. Uh, there are no other speakers on uh, the, the screen. Oh, I'm sorry, United States. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Chairman. The United States would like to remark that this organization is not the proper venue to debate U.S. sanctions. Action here will not change U.S. national security policy. We have been clear that our sanctions target specific behavior. We will continue to enforce our sanctions until those behaviors stop. The United States continues to uphold all of its international obligations to ensure the safety and security of international aviation. We object to attempts to shift the blame to the United States for the negative consequences of the abuse by others of international aviation norms and principles. Thank you very much. I now close the discussion part of uh, item 36 um, regarding working paper 247. The views and comments of the floor will be expressed in the report. Um, regarding the other two papers, um, we have heard uh, statements and positions expressed by states concerned uh, in these two papers, as well as other views expressed by other delegations. As you can see, it's an issue um, on which concerned states are holding strong views. It is a matter involving complex, delicate, and sensitive issues, which have been raised in, on previous occasions, and one which the Economic Commission could not resolve. I am aware that one of these issues is being considered by the Council. In light of this, I would propose, I would like to propose that we report the discussion on this item uh, in our report to the plenary and that this matter be referred to the President of the Council, whose good offices have been involved in these issues in the past. If you agree with my proposal, uh, this will be the decision of the Commission. Are there any objections? Saudi Arabia. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, we kindly support the stances expressed by a number of states. We actually want that we will not study or discuss any more a subject that has been referred to the International Court of Justice. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Cuba. Gracias. Yes, thank you very much, sir. I would like to point out that ICAO, in fact, is the appropriate forum for dealing with issues such as these. And I would like to remind you that the letter sent to the UN Secretary General on 30th of April by ICAO, the Secretary General of the United Nations called on all international organizations to decide whether or not they were complying with resolutions taken by the UN General Assembly with respect to the economic, financial blockade against Cuba. So in that letter, we informed that A3915, previous ICAO Assembly, recognized the impact in terms of this blockade against the state of Cuba. These extraterritorial measures taken against the airline company Cubana de Aviación, which runs counter to international law, and it doesn't take into account the fact that particular measures have been taken against our country. So for this reason, I would like to repeat once again that I would like to see this commission as well as the assembly carry out the request as maintained in our letter and in our working paper. And we also would like to express our support for working paper 247 put forward by Qatar. Thank you, sir. By 387, I beg your pardon, 387 put forward by Qatar. Thank you. Bahrain, please. Al Bahrain, Bahrain, microphone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I get you now. Uh, working paper 387 is uh, touching upon a very sensitive and complex issue, which is both political and legal. Currently, there is a legal battle at the highest level at the ICJ, and therefore, we request again that. The Council Decision 216-6, dated 1st March 2019, to be complied with. And we'd like also our request to be noted in the final report of the meeting. Thank you. Bonsoir, merci, Monsieur le Président. Good evening and thank you, sir. All right. We definitely consulted our colleagues in the legal bureau. Unfortunately, they're currently busy, but so they can't come here in person. But it's quite obvious that the issue raised at the council for is at the council level, as was recalled. I now uh, declare item 36 closed. Before you go, I have some announcements to, um, to make. Alors, nous avons une autre journée productive. So we've had another productive day today, and I would like to thank all delegates for their cooperation. I would also like to thank our dear interpreters for their excellent work. I would remind you that our next meeting will take place in this room on Monday, September 30th from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. And that's when we will take a look at the final report. 
So please come 10 minutes earlier because we are going to start at 2 o'clock sharp. I would also like to let you know that the last meeting is not optional, right? In fact, it's the culmination of our work. And so we're counting on all of you to be here to review the draft text ahead of time and then attend the meeting to finalize our report. The draft reports from the second meeting will be on the site at the latest tomorrow evening. And so I would encourage you to go and look at them and to make any comments by Monday noon. In order to make our discussions move smoothly, I would also request that you send your comments by email. If you didn't take count of it, here's the email address. It's right on this piece of paper here in front of me. You can also send your comments in print form to one of the Secretariat reps here today. And that will enable us to be much more efficient in our work on Monday. So as we did today, on Monday we won't be discussing any grammatical or editorial type matters, only substantive issues. However, if you do have any, any comments of this sort, you can send them to the Secretariat ahead of time. So be careful on the way going home and if you're moving around and see you on Monday.